Imagine pulling into your cruise port only to be met by hundreds of protesters. Well, that just happened down in Key West, Florida. We'll fill you in on the full story. Well, the tale of the Norwegian breakaway still has not ended as even more COVID positive cases have emerged from the ship that has seen over 17 cases thus far. Royal Caribbean is celebrating a major milestone. Plus we're a third of the way through December and there is restart news to share. All this coming up on Midships. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Well, I've got some good news to share with all of you. This is my most recent COVID test. This is to board the Carnival Mardi Gras tomorrow in Port Canaveral. Doing a seven night cruise down to Mexico. Gonna stop at Cozumel, Costa Maya, and then on to Mahogany Bay down in Honduras. So any of you that are cruising along with me in the Mardi Gras, I cannot wait to see you on board. Now there's tons of cruise news to get into, but before we get started, I wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel. Just down below the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also make sure the bell notification is turned on. And while you're looking around down there, there's some great resources in my description box. All of the articles referenced in today's episode will be listed in that description box, as well as some Amazon affiliate links to some fantastic cruise swag, things that I use on every single cruise, like this passport holder with a COVID card insert. There's also some really good magnetic hooks. If you didn't know this, most of the walls and the doors within your cruise ship are made of metal, and these hooks are fantastic for hanging up your cruise lanyards, all kinds of things. And plus, clicking on the links down there does help give back to the Midships channel just a little bit. Thanks so much. Now let's start into today's cruise news and we've got restart news to cover. I can't believe we are already 10 days into December and I've barely done any restart news for this month, but that is all gonna change right now. And we're gonna get started with an article from cruiseindustrynews.com. Four carnival ships resuming service in December. Carnival Cruise Line will close out 2021 with a total of 18 cruise ships back in revenue operations. In December, while one ship is being taken out of service for emergency repairs, four vessels will welcome guests back on board. And here are the details. And of course, the noteworthy ship here is the Carnival Radiance, starting out of Long Beach, California. Let's learn a little bit more about the Radiance. This is the ship that had the $200 million makeover here. The former Carnival Victory is finally resuming service later this month. After a long wait, the vessel's kicking off a program of short cruisers in Southern California beginning December 13th. Now named the Carnival Radiance, the ship spent nearly two years at Navantia Shipyard for a $200 million bow to stern makeover. Originally planned to last six weeks, the refit started back in March of 2020, but due to the pandemic related delays could only be completed in October of the following year. The nearly 3,000 passenger vessel now features all of Carnival's Funship 2.0 dining, beverage, and entertainment spaces, in addition to new and rebuilt public areas, as well as cabins. Another highlight of the work done to the ship is the addition of the second, Shaq's Big Chicken at Sea. The first one, of course, is on Carnival Mardi Gras, and we're gonna introduce you to Shaq's Big Chicken at Sea as soon as we get on board the Mardi Gras. I'm actually thinking about doing a little quick sail away live stream for you guys, so if that's something you'd like to see, go ahead and comment it down below. I know I did it on Adventure of the Seas and a good amount of you tuned in, so I'm thinking it might be time to make that a tradition. Now, in addition to the Radiance, Carnival Conquest will also resume operations out of Miami. On the same day, December 13th, the Conquest will launch a program of short cruises to the Bahamas as well as down to Mexico. And two more ships are gonna round out the list. The Carnival Liberty as well as the Carnival Sunshine will now be filling in for the Carnival Horizon which is the ship that is having propulsion issues. Yet another Vista-class vessel with propulsion issues. Surprise, surprise. Two additional ships will re-enter service in December to replace the Carnival Horizon, which is currently headed to Europe for an unscheduled dry dock to fix a propulsion issue. The vessel will be out of service through mid-January. Previously set to resume operations in 2022, the Carnival Liberty and the Carnival Sunshine will now pick up the slack for Horizon's guests, servicing her itineraries from Miami. And that's not the only restart news we have coming at you, because NCL just had a notable restart out of the port of Tampa. From Crew-Center.com, 10th Norwegian Cruise Line ship resumes cruises after a long operational pause. The Norwegian Dawn is the 10th NCL ship in the fleet to resume cruising, and she welcomed guests back on December 8th with cruises from Tampa, Florida. 
adding Norwegian Cruise Line to the choice list for those wishing to sail from Port Tampa. The next NCL vessel following the Don to resume guest services this month will be the Norwegian Pearl, who's scheduled to set sail out of Miami on December 23rd. And we still have more restart news to cover because Holland America and their line of damn ships has some restart news coming out as well. Holland America Line restart. Six ships will be in service by January. Continuing their restart plans, Holland America Line will see six vessels sailing with guests by early 2022. The Carnival-owned premium brand first resumed service back in July. Currently, five vessels are in service in North America, including the brand new Rotterdam. And I know many of you in the Midships family have personally messaged me and let me know you've been aboard the Rotterdam, and I've heard some really good things. If you've been on board the Rotterdam or any other ship for that matter, why don't you go ahead and check out the Midships Instagram account. I'll go ahead and post it up here in the upper right hand corner. It will also be linked in the description below and you can always find it by going to Midships Cruise on Instagram. We'd love to see your comments and give us a follow and we'll always be happy to follow you back so we can check out your most recent cruise content. Now, Royal Caribbean Group is celebrating a pretty big milestone. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about it from cruiseradio.net by Sarah Bretz. Royal Caribbean celebrates one year since cruise restart. It has officially been just over a year since Royal Caribbean resumed sailing after the global cruise industry shut down. The line first hit the high seas again with guests when its quantum class ship, Quantum of the Sea, set sail from Singapore on a cruise to nowhere on December 3rd of last year. The ship was kicking off a series of three and four night cruises to nowhere, which were available only to residents of Singapore. Since then, 20 more Royal Caribbean ships have come back online and have carried over half a million passengers in the past year alone. Among all 21 ships that are now sailing again, they have departed from 16 home ports and collectively visited 50 ports of call around the world. Perfect Day at Coco Cay or Coco Key has been a significant stop for the cruise line and a popular stop amongst passengers, as it's Royal Caribbean's private island oasis in the Bahamas. Because it's a private island where Royal Caribbean can control the environment, it's been a great port call option during these unusual times. And of course, I've been at Perfect Day at Coco Cay twice in the past month, so while we continue on this article, why don't I roll a little B-roll that I took while I was on the island? Altogether, in the past year, ships have made 168 stops at Perfect Day at Coco Cay, carrying nearly 300,000 passengers to the island. 2,500 of those guests took zipline rides while there, and 1,000 rides have taken place on the island's up, up, and away helium balloon. 33,000 visitors have enjoyed the island's Thrill Water Park, and 25,000 have spent time relaxing at the Coco Beach Club. And for one of the most important figures, 27,345 crew members have been brought back to sea since the shutdown. Royal Caribbean currently has 25 ships in their global fleet, with another Wonder of the Seas set to debut in 2022. Most recently, the line welcomed a new Quantum Ultra Class ship to its family, the Odyssey of the Seas. And of course, I was recently on board Odyssey of the Seas. If you missed that content, Go ahead and look back just a couple weeks ago in the channel. I put out some great content from onboard Odyssey of the Seas. So hopefully you liked your quick look at Perfect Day at Coco Cay. If you've never been there before, I would highly recommend booking a cruise with Royal Caribbean and taking a perfect day at Coco Cay. Now, over the past week or so, we've talked to you about the story unfolding aboard the Norwegian Breakaway. And there's even more information coming out now. And I'd like to share it with you in an article from Jim Walker's CruiseLawNews.com. In an article published by Jim Walker. More COVID cases on Norwegian breakaway as the NCL cruise ship sails to Roatan. At least three additional crew members are now infected with COVID on the Norwegian breakaway, according to a crew member on board who wishes to remain anonymous. This crew member also informed us that there are nine crew members in isolation on the ship due to close contact with other infected persons. The three newly infected crew members at this time include a recreational staff member, a stateroom attendant, and one of the ship's musicians. The Norwegian breakaway arrived in Roatan yesterday morning during its current cruise itinerary in the Caribbean after it was delayed leaving its home port of New Orleans over the weekend. As previous reportings listed, this past weekend, the breakaway returned to New Orleans after a week-long cruise to the Caribbean and down to Mexico, and the Louisiana Department of Health initially reported there to be 10 COVID cases involving guests and crew members on board. Additional testing occurred once the ship returned to port and revealed an additional seven cases for a total of 17 known so far and counting. 
This total does not include the three crew members that we learned of yesterday. After the outbreak became public information on Sunday, Norwegian Cruise Line issued a statement that said only a handful, i.e. five or so cases, were on board. Obviously, we know that turned out not to be true. The infection count would undoubtedly rise as over 3,200 guests were on board the ship. In addition, 1,600 crew members work aboard Norwegian Breakaway. NCL claims that all of the infected guests are allegedly asymptomatic, which remains to be seen. So obviously, Cruise Law News as a source does have some little bit of bias to them, but it's a known entity. If you'd like to read the rest of the article, including some of Jim Walker's tweets, it is linked in the description below this video. Now imagine you're finally on a cruise ship after waiting a year, maybe two years because of the shutdown, and you get to beautiful Key West, Florida. And as you're walking off the ship, you see signs being held, people shouting. Maybe they're excited to have you back. Or maybe they hate you and don't want you there. Let's learn a little bit more about what Norwegian Don came into contact with when they finally got to Key West. From KeysWeekly.com by Mandy Miles. Key West cruise ship debate continues to divide the island. The political and personal split that has marked Key West's ongoing cruise ship debate for nearly two years became a physical divide on Thursday morning when two sides positioned themselves on separate waterfront piers to either welcome returning cruise ship passengers or spurn the ship that exceeds the new size limits that voters approved in November of 2020. The Key West Committee for Safer Cleaner Ships which has spearheaded the significant reduction to Key West cruise ship industry, hosted a rally at Mallory Pier Thursday morning to protest the ship that came in port, not its arriving passengers, according to SCS treasurer Arlo Haskell. Arlo says it's not about the passengers, it's about these big ships and the environmental damage that's bad for Key West tourism, adding that he counted approximately 300 protesters at the rally just off the bow of Norwegian Don's ship. And now that 300 number does sound a little bit higher than all of the numbers I was able to corroborate. The highest number I saw aside from this was 200 protesters. Meanwhile, at the adjacent Pier B Marina, the privately owned cruise ship dock, Scores of local business owners, Chamber of Commerce members, and tourism workers held signs welcoming the arrival of the ship and its passengers back to Key West after the ship's nearly two-year absence due to COVID restrictions. Tom McMurrian of Pier B and Ocean Properties was there Thursday morning and spoke with Keys Weekly. This was his statement. With reasonable people coming together, I think we can come up with reasonable solutions, McMurray said. We definitely believe in Key West tourism economy, and people should be able to come here by ship, plane, car, or however they'd like. And they should feel welcome. Stephen Nakila, owner of the local Wendy's restaurant, was holding a welcome sign Thursday morning at Pier B and said, It's because of these passengers and all tourists that we're able to live in such a beautiful place. I'm here representing the hospitality industry and its workers because, quite frankly, the majority of them are afraid to speak their minds out of fear of being targeted or having their businesses targeted by online and social media mobs. In the end, Thursday's protest against Norwegian Dawn was a peaceful demonstration. The protesters carried signs and waved safer, cleaner ships flags while chanting, Stop the silt, respect our vote, and no big ships. And we have some photos here from the protest. We'll go ahead and click on through them here. Here is the Stop the Silt, the new famous flag that they're holding in Key West during these protests. And then here is the other side of the protest there on Pier B. Welcome, cruise ship passengers. So here is the 200 and maybe allegedly 300 people. I don't think that looks like 300, but maybe I'm wrong. And we have a photo of the Norwegian Don in port and the first cruise ship passengers coming off the Don. If you'd like to take a look at these photos yourself, again, this article is linked in the description below. So I'm gonna ask you guys to sound off in the description below. If you got off a cruise ship and there was a huge protest against you, plus there was a protest for you being there, what would your thoughts be? Would you even wanna bother going on a cruise to a place like that? I know personally, I don't think I wanna cruise to Key West until these people get it together down there. If you made it this far into today's episode, why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? While you're down there, make sure you leave a big thumbs up on this video. It's the only way to tell YouTube to push cruise content out to more cruisers like you. Thanks for stopping by the channel today. And until tomorrow, when we embark on our cruise aboard Carnival Mardi Gras, we'll see you on the midships.